Hello everybody. We are finally getting the second Halloween video coming, uh, getting done this week. So I wanted to go ahead, get this online on Halloween. That way it makes a little more sense. If not, I mean, we're going to post it today, of course, but it's the day before Halloween, but yeah, I wanted to get it on beforehand. Anyway, this is our second Halloween video, and in our previous video, we had talked about the exorcism of Roland Doe in 1949. If you have not seen that video, but you would like to, be, do be uh, sure to check that one out. Um, as for today, for our second video, it's a, just a little more generic. It's not so frightening. It is more just a basic history rundown of one thing that a lot of people really don't know at all. And it's kind of surprising that we don't. But it's also kind of funny that we don't because we celebrate the holiday every year. And today we're just going to simply go over what the history of the Halloween holiday is. Because many people don't actually know what started Halloween, where it comes from, how long has it been celebrated, or where did certain traditions come from that we do on it. A lot of people actually don't know the real history. It's not like Christmas where most people know the story of baby Jesus being born on that day. Or the 4th of July, where we know, oh, that's America declared independence. It's not like those holidays where most people know what happened, or like Thanksgiving, which is going to be the next one coming up, or holiday-wise, where we all kind of know the big feast between of the big feast of thanks between the pilgrims and the Native Americans in the Plymouth, Massachusetts, in the 1621 or 1622, I think, around there, and. Anyway, most people know that they know that backstory, but they really don't know nothing about Halloween. So for this final Halloween video, we're just going to simply kind of look over what, where does Halloween come from, what the history, where the traditions come from, everything like that. So this is not going to be a very, this shouldn't be a scary video. This is simply a video of basically telling why do we even have this day? Where does it come from? Why do we why do we trick or treat on this day? Why are we scared of black cats? Why is Halloween so much associated with the dead and the ghosts? Why do we have jack-o'-lanterns? We will answer most of these questions. So, in order to really look back on Halloween, you're going back all the way to two about 2000 years. Yes, Halloween is this ancient people. It is that old. However, 2,000 years ago, of course, it was not actually called Halloween. It, the name has gradually evolved over time, but the essential festival on the... Uh, but one thing has never changed, and that one thing that's never changed, it has typically always been celebrated on October 31st of any given year of any civilization's calendar. So that is the one constant. October 31st has constantly usually been the date of this festival. It's just over time, the name has gradually changed to what we now know as Halloween. So as I mentioned, we gotta go back 2,000 years to really understand where Halloween comes from. And the earliest evidence of a festival of any type or celebration on October 31st comes from the ancient Celts. Now the Celts were a tribal people. They were a tribal ancient people that used to live in... Well, they actually, they are still alive. Their descendants are actually still here, but there are still Celtic peoples. And predominantly, most of the remaining Celt most of the remaining Celtics on the planet are actually in Ireland. Most of, the, if you're Irish, you're probably, or if you're part Irish or anything, you're probably part Celtic. At some point, you are probably got some Celtic blood. Now, the Celtics, or the Celts, as we'll call them, 2,000 years ago, they were here too. They were an ancient people that are still around, although they have evolved or changed over time, adapted to changing environments. But anyway, 2,000 years ago, the Celts mainly lived in northern, what is now northern France, in the United Kingdom, which is Scotland, Wales, England, or you can just say Great Britain. or And most uh, predominantly, they were the dominant uh, people in the island of Ireland. And today they are still the dominant people in Ireland. So a lot of Irish traditions come from the Celts. Like, for example, they're the ones that invented the Banshee. And I shouldn't say invented because, who knows, they, they could be real. I'm not a big, massive person on Irish folklore, but I know about the Banshee. And I know that is Irish in origin. 
But anyway, the Celts are really the first ones to have any sort of celebration on this particular date of October 31st, and this was 2,000 years ago. This was before even the Roman Empire. The Celts celebrated a festival that they called Samhain. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell you right here, and in fact, I'm, I'm going to write this down. You want to know how odd the Celtic language is at times, people? Right, let me show you. Because I'm not kidding you. It is one of the oddest things I've seen. Everywhere I've looked, this is how they uh, spell it. This is how they spell Samhain. S-A-M-H-A-I-N. Now, I'm not making fun of a language here, but that is like, unless you actually look some of this stuff up, you will not know how to pronounce any of this. Because I was like calling it Samhain or something like that. I would have assumed that the H and the M were used. And no, I had to look up the pronunciation. And no, it says Samhain. They like entirely ignore the M and the H. And I think the A. So basically, you could do rid of the two A's and the M-H. I don't get it. But anyway, that's how they spell it, and then it took me a while to actually figure out how to say that. So I had to look it up, and apparently you pronounce it as Samhain. But anyway, that aside, Samhain is this festival that the ancient Celts would celebrate on October 31st, roughly 2,000 years ago. And they celebrate it on, 30, on the 31st because this was the last day of their calendar. The Celts had their own calendar, and their new year, instead of... Nowadays, of course, when we think of the new year, unless you're from China or Asia, you probably are think, or maybe even Russia, I think, but if you're in the Western culture, Western Europe, or North America, anything like that, I'm going to guarantee you that your new year probably starts on January 1st, and December 31st is the last day of the old year. Well, the Celts had the calendar too, but their new year was November 1st, not January 1st. Their New Year's would start on November 1st, was the first day of the year. October 31st was the last day of the year. They still had the other months, it's just they switched it around. Now, they had this on the last day of the year, was Samhain. And at the time of Samhain, it was believed that it was partly due to the environment changing around them that uh, kind of inspired the Celts' beliefs. Because let's, let's think of Samhain time. Let's think of late, late October, of anywhere in the world, mostly, unless you're in the tropics. Let's think of it here in the United States or uh, Ireland or the northern European countries. Let's think of it like this. Typically, you're going to have the harvest is coming in, the crops are getting ready to be taken off, the summer is coming. Summer has finally come. It's it's come and gone. It's starting to end. The leaves are falling off. Everything's dying. The ground's turning brown. The grass is dying off. The leaves are falling off the trees, and the basically the world, the the land around you is just kind of going dead. It's a, the summer's gone. It's time for uh, what the. Celts found scary was they thought well, fought winter was scary because it was cold, it was dark, and there wasn't always a guarantee you were going to make it through the winter because you might lose food, you could be attacked, or whatever, you might die from the cold. Winter was a scary time for them, and thus it was kind of a last hurrah before we got to start sheltering in place because they didn't like winter at all. Well, Let's think. This is like just before winter really kicks in. Although technically winter doesn't kick in in the northern hemisphere until December 21st. Like just not till December, but I don't know if anyone has noticed this, but after Halloween, you can basically kiss the good weather, the good warm weather goodbye. Because in most cases, although there are exceptions, most days after Halloween, especially in November, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but it gets, it isn't just cold anymore like it was in October and September. It's like getting winter cold. It's getting butt cold. It's not till November that you really get those freezing temperatures that finally you're like, okay, now I can't take the cold no more. Now, I'm not like that, but I do know that the, I have noticed that when November comes after Halloween, temperatures tend to drop even more than they had previously. <laughs> no. <Ooh. laughs> To excuse me. I don't know what that was. <laughs> anyway, 
The Celts believed that on this night of Samhain, on October 31st, at the end of the year, that the ghosts of the dead would be able to return to the earth. And they believed they were able to do this because they believed that this there was an inv- there was a boundary between the spiritual the spirit world and the world of the living, and that on this one night of the year, on the end of the year, at the last day of the year, this boundary between the two l- worlds that kind of kept the spirits from coming into our world was blurred. It became distorted, and it allowed the spirits to come up and come to earth, come back to earth for one day. And the Celts believed that during this, during Samhain, there were spirits everywhere. They believed that some of them were good and some of them were bad. They believed that the spirits of the dead were coming back. So even back in its earliest form, Halloween had an association with the dead because in its earliest form of Samhain, it was basically about the dead coming back to Earth, the dead coming back to the living, basically. Now, the Celts believed these spirits could cause trouble. They could damage crops, which they desperately needed if they were going to survive the winter, and they would also just cause regular mischief. But they also believed that the spirits coming up from the spirit world also helped their priests, which were called druids, to make predictions of the future, which could comfort them during the winter if the priest gave them a very good prediction of a good spring to come. They had something to look forward to and keep hope up during the winter. Now, the Druid priests would often build large bonfires in the countryside or by the villages, and this is where a lot of the Celtic people would come, and this is where they would celebrate Samhain mainly. They would come to this big, massive bonfire, and they would burn crops, and they would burn animals. Yes, they would burn animals. They did sacrifices. Luckily, they weren't cutting them open. They were just, okay, roast. (laughs) And then, are we going to eat this? Hmm, nah. No, we'll just let it burn. I don't know if they actually ate it or not. I don't find I have not found anything that indicates they would have ate the animals that they put on the bonfire because supposedly the burning of these crops and animals to the Celtics was a to the Celts was a sacrifice to their deities, their gods. It was a sacrifice, basically. Now the people would commonly wear costumes. Yes, they wore costumes 2,000 years ago. Of course, they didn't have plastic and makeup masks and everything else. This was not your typical, oh, I'm going to go back 2,000 years and I'm going to see a guy dressed up as an alien. Or I'm going to go back 2,000 years and I'm going to find a guy dressed up as a mummy or Michael Myers or whatever or, or fairy godmother. No, no, it was not this kind of costume. These costumes were usually made of animal heads or their animal skin. Yes, yes, people, since because we didn't have plastic, we had to use what we had. I know that probably sounds gross, but you gotta live with it. People lived differently 2,000 years ago. You try it. Anyway, the they would commonly use animal heads and skin to make costumes for themselves, and then they would even carve faces in turnips, not pumpkins, because, remember... As we discussed in the Columbian Exchange video, Europeans had no idea about pumpkins until they came over here to the New World because pumpkins were not native to the Old World. They were native to North America. The Europeans had not even been over here yet. So they knew nothing about pumpkins. So they got they used what they had. And the first jack-o'-lanterns were made out of turnips. Don't ask me how they did it, but they did it. I got a photo. There's a turnip lantern. This is what they used during Samhain. They would carve a face into a turnip. And I I don't know about you, but this thing kind of looks creepier than the pumpkin. But anyway, they would do, they would carve faces in these turnips and then light them from the inside like a turnip lantern. And why did they do this? Well, this is where jack-o'-lanterns originally come from. And why do we light a light in it? Well, the Celts believed that by lighting this, by carving a face into a turnip and then lighting it, it might it might scare the spirits off, any evil spirits. It might scare them away, basically demons. So, if you got a jack o' lantern in your house, it looks like this. Odds are, it probably looks like this one, even though this is fake. This is just a little decoration. But anyway, this is a modern jack o' lantern. 
that's supposedly to scare evil spirits out, out of your house or away from you or whatever. It's to ward evil away. What about this would scare a demon? I don't know. This don't even terrify me. No, I'm not terrified of you. But anyway, this is what they believed. And as we go on here, the Celts would even tell each other's fortunes on this night. They would have fortune tellers. Yeah, this is really sounding mystical. And then when it was all over, each of the Celts had kind of blew out their hearth fires in their uh, houses before the festival began, and they would not relight them until it was over, and they would relight them by taking some flame from the massive bonfire that they had had for the festival, and take some of that flame home somehow on something lit, and then light their hearth with it, and it was supposedly uh, basically a blessing of protection if they relit it from the sacred bonfire that they had used. So this was basically Samhain. Samhain. Now, Samhain remained the same for a long, long time because the Celts lived in those areas uninterrupted for thousands of years. Well, then comes after 0 AD, we're now in our own century, because remember, this was BC when they first started doing it. This was before Jesus. But now we're going to AD, which is what we're in now. And we come to the year of the early 40s AD, and by this time, that one empire that we all know and love I'm kidding if you, I'm not guaranteeing everyone loves it, but anyway, that one empire that I'm sure you probably know comes and conquers most of Europe by that time, and that is none other than the mighty Roman Empire. And of course, Rome did conquer much of the Celtic lands. They did conquer France, which they called Gaul, and they did conquer England and Wales and Scotland, which they called Britannia, which is where the name Britain comes from. The only Celtic lands that the Romans did not conquer or invade was Ireland. They did not get to Ireland. But anyway, now we're going to transition away from the Irish a little bit, because the Romans, as they take over the Celtic lands and rule them, the, Celtics are, the Celts are still there. They're not leaving. They're just now being ruled by a Roman, by Roman authority. So they're still there, and they're still practicing their culture. And the Romans really had no problem with the culture. They let people practice what they needed to when they felt it was not a threat to their own religion or their own state. And eventually, over the 400-year period that the Romans mainly ruled these Celtic lands, their culture began to kind of mix and blend in with the Celtic culture. During the Roman times, there were two new festivals that get, began to occur in late October, not specifically on October 31st, but just in late October, that were kind of created by combining Roman festival traditions along with the ancient Celt, Celtic Samhain tradition. The Romans had basically had their own little versions of Halloween. The first one in late October was called Feralia, and Feralia is... It was a day of which the dead were basically commem it was a day to commemorate the passing of the dead of their death. So again, another holiday associated with death. And then this festival was to honor the goddess Pomona, which she was the goddess of fruits and trees, and this was often celebrated by you would go visit a tree or. Uh, fruit tree or something like that, or you would um, burn or eat fruit. Anyway, this is where one important uh, tradition in Halloween comes from, and Pomona's symbol was the apple. Well, I don't know if anyone does this much anymore, because I have never seen it personally. I've seen it in movies and stuff like that, but a common Halloween tradition that used to be, I don't know if it still is relevant, was bobbing for apples. Well, this is likely, it is believed, that this Roman festival of Feralia in late October was likely the very, the place where bobbing for apples originated for Halloween. It was probably where this tradition came from. So Feralia is roughly 2,000 years old. So that makes apple bobbing 2,000 years old. The Romans also had another festival 
that they w would celebrate, but it was not as much as Feralia, and it mostly was just, again, a Respecting the Dead festival. Like, it was so insignificant that we really don't have that much info on it. But anyway, that's what happens with Rome. They combine a little bit of their festivities with that of the Celtic Samhain, and they kind of develop their own little version. So here we are moving through time, and there's still a typical celebration on that day. Well, here's when we're going to get, as we go forward here from now on, we're going to get to the point where Halloween actually begins to kind of more develop into a semi-recognizable day. Halloween began to develop much further after the Roman Empire fell in 476. And just to be clarified, the Roman Empire had split by that time, and it was technically only the Western Roman Empire that fell in 476. The Eastern Roman Empire still continued until 1453, but it was commonly referred to as the Byzantine Empire by anyone from outside the empire. Now, the people within it still called themselves Romans until 1453 when the Ottoman Turks took over. but out to the outside, it was no longer the Roman Empire, it was called the Byzantine Empire. But any ironically, that's actually where my name comes from. I found that I went out pretty distinctly. But anyway, with the spread of Christianity through Europe, Christianity becomes a major influencing factor in how Halloween kind of becomes uh, celebrated in the future as after the Roman Empire fell, but actually it really started during the last century of the Roman Empire's existence, the Western one, because the Emperor Constantine had officially legalized Christianity and made it the official religion of the empire, and instead got rid of all the Roman goddesses, gods and goddesses, and replaced it with Christianity. So even after the Roman Empire's fall, Christianity was still there in Europe, and it was really the only unifying factor in the continent, because the Dark Ages, as they call it, had kind of fallen, where people were so disarray, there was really not a major government or anything, but the only thing people really had in common was their faith in God. Now, with the spread of Christianity throughout Europe, the ancient Celtic rites and rituals, such as Samhain, they gradually become blended a little bit with Christianity as it kind of influences their culture. On May 13th of, six, of 609, A.D., like we're in 2020 A.D., Pope Boniface the Fourth, or Boniface the Fourth, Boniface, dedicated the old Roman Pantheon in Rome to honor all Christian martyrs, as, and he established the Catholic festival of All Martyrs Day. Now, this day was celebrated on May 13th, and you might say, well, why does this correlate? Because this later moves later on and has an impact. It was later on expanded by Pope Gregory the Third, and he makes it, the festival include uh, not only all martyrs, but it is also to include all the saints as remembrance to them. And he moves it from May thirteenth to November first. In case you don't know, All Saints Day is what November first is typically called. If you're a Catholic, if you're not a Catholic, you probably don't know that. November 1st is All Saints Day. In 1080, or 1000, whatever you want to call it here, the Catholic Church made November 2nd, the day after All Saints Day, it made November 2nd All Souls Day in order to honor the dead. And if you are from Mexico, you probably celebrate Day of the Dead, or Dia Los Muertos, or however they say it. I do apologize, it's been a while since I've been in Spanish class. But, anyway, you have Day of the Dead. If you're from Mexico, or you have Mexican heritage, you might be celebrating that. So, you celebrate that day, and that is why partly you celebrate it, is because, of course, Spain colonized Mexico, and Spain was heavily Catholic, and this was a Catholic tradition of All Souls Day. It's just in Mexico in particular, I think it was in a couple other Latin American countries as well, it did take root, but it was mostly Mexico that it dominates the culture, and they celebrate Day of the Dead, where it kind of makes it fun about the death. They don't make it spooky, they make it they dress skulls up with flowers and all kinds of things. It's, but it's a day to honor the dead, just like it is now in their tradition. 
Now, it is likely that this, that the All Souls Day on November 2nd, or Day of the Dead, as you might also know it as, do excuse me, it's believed that this was probably an actual attempt by the Catholic Church to actually get rid and replace Samhain, the Celtic tradition, because they knew the Celts had a tradition on that day. And although it was a long time cherished festival, it was not Christian in origin. It paid uh, respect to uh, Celt Celtic deities that were not Christian deities, that were not the Christian faith. And thus they were like, well, we can't have this because this don't have any reference to God. This is almost blasphemous. So they, it was kind of, it's widely believed that introducing All Souls Day was kind of a act by the church to get rid of Samhain and introduce a holiday that was similar that was just Christianized. As it basically had the same thing as Samhain. It was honoring the dead, and the other one was just the dead come back from the grave, and you don't want to upset them. Now, All Souls Day was celebrated like Samhain in most ways, including it had bonfires just like Samhain did. It had parades and costumes as Samhain did, except these costumes were no longer made of animal skin or animal heads. They were now made out of other things, still not to the latex and the plastic and stuff like that, children. But we had different costumes by this time. We had saints and angels and devils. That was common back in this time from during the Middle Ages. Now, this is also where Halloween starts to get its name. And eventually, All Souls Day has several other names. And it comes to be known as All Hallows and All Hallamus. I take it they were probably taking cue from Christmas, if I'm guessing. But gradually, since All Souls Day and All Saints Day came to kind of be known as All, All Hallows Day or All, or All Hallowsmas, gradually, the night before All Saints Day, on October 31st, which was the same day as the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, it gradually comes to be known as All Hallows Eve, just like the day before Christmas Day is called Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. How we have those Eves, the day before, we call them Eve. Well, this one, they're calling All Hallows Eve, which eventually gets transitioned into the name of Halloween. So this is really where you first get the word hollow in there to what's going to become Halloween eventually. Halloween was originally known as All Hallows Eve, and some people it still is. Now, now we're going to get to where Halloween really modernizes. Where does it kind of come together to the modern form that we kind of recognize? And this doesn't really happen until the 19th century, the 1800s, and this primarily occurs in the United States. Now, if we're talking in the United States here, prior to the 19th century, like during colonial times in the uh, 17th and 18th centuries, the 1600s and 1700s, you, Halloween was starting to have a root there, but it still wasn't entirely like it is now. It still wasn't entirely recognizable. Most there was Halloween or All Hallows Eve celebrations in colonial America. However, they were mostly in the southern colonies, such as Mar anywhere south of Maryland. So you had Maryland typically celebrated it. People in Mar colonists in Maryland would celebrate it. Virginia, the Carolinas, and Georgia. You typically did not have colonists from New England celebrating it. They typically would not, and this was likely due to the fact that they had been settled by Puritan Protestants who were very strict on religious ways, and thus having this little festival to commemorate the dead and all this stuff, to them, that might have seemed a little bit blasphemous. Believe me, the Puritans were very strict. They were a very strict religious sector, so... They had a lot of restrictions on what you could and could not do. I mean, my, I mean, no offense here, people, but these are the people that literally had witch trials in 1693 or 1692 in Salem, Massachusetts. This is literally the people that had witch trials and accused their neighbors of being witches and then hung them. <laughs> now... The traditions did evolve over time, especially after the United States 
became independent in 1783, although it had already declared independence in 1776, but it was not till then that the Revolutionary War ended. The settlers in America kind of mixed their traditions of celebrating All Hallows' Eve with that of the Native Americans on the continent. And this is where they start incorporating an All Hallows' Eve celebration that usually would involve dancing, uh, singing, celebrating the harvest, and they would have fortune-telling, like the ancient Samhain, and they would even share stories about the dead. It was a fun Halloween festival, and even have bobbing for apples at times they would. It wasn't until the later half of the 19th century, the af like eight, after 1850 and the Civil War in the 1860s, so we're really talking the after 1865, it wasn't until then that the United States saw an influx of immigrants, because of course no immigrants were going to really come to the United States when it's in the middle of fighting when they're in the middle of fighting each other. And on top of that, this is where Halloween starts to truly modernize. Was after 1865, after the end of the Civil War, and we, we, who can we thank for this? Surprisingly, you can thank the immigrants and one group of immigrants in particular, as we mentioned earlier on when we discussed Samhain. The Celts are still the predominant people in what country? Ireland. And where did a lot of immigrants come from that came to America during the 19th century and early 20th? Ireland. So we get a large influx of Irish immigrants coming into the United States. These Irish immigrants bring along their traditions, they bring along their culture, they bring along everything that is endemic to their home with them that they could actually carry and stuff that they know. So the Irish bring along their culture, and this includes their versions of their ancient uh, cultural traditions, such as Samhain. They still celebrated Samhain, some of them, or some of them had kind of adapted it to be a little more Christian, but they celebrated it in some form. When they br The Irish immigrants were the ones who brought the Samhain traditions over here to the United States, and this eventually melded together with what was already here, the All Hallows Eve celebrations mixed together with the Samhain celebrations, and you kind of mix them up a little bit, and over time, they meld into this new kind of festivity that eventually becomes modern Halloween. Now, trick-or-treating was one of the final uh, Halloween parts to really evolve. When the Irish came over here, they were the ones that brought the tradition of jack-o'-lanterns over here. And of course, when they got over here, they realized that turnips don't grow too well in the United States, at least not anywhere I've seen. But they quickly realized there was an alternative here, vegetable here that they could use to make the jack-o'-lanterns, and that's where they first came up with the first pumpkin ones. Because they came here, turnips weren't exactly a cash crop, but pumpkins were very plentiful in the fall here in the United States, so they used what they had. That's where you get the first pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns. They carried the jack-o'-lantern tradition from Ireland, except they had to use something new. The ghosts never went away. They brought the ghost traditions with them, just as the Americans kind of had, that ghosts were, or the dead, we able to come back on Halloween. Now, granted, they do not look like this person. I mean, this literally could be a person with a cloth over their head. But anyway, most of the traditions start coming then. Bobbing for apples was already here, but the Irish bring along the fortune. They bring along the uh, jack-o'-lanterns, and they bring along some of the early precursors to trick-or-treating, uh, which later evolves by the 1890s. Trick-or-treating really didn't come about until people in America started wanting Halloween to kind of become a community-friendly holiday, as they termed it, where the whole community could become involved and we get cordial with each other. Now, this desire was also kind of took, was able to be combined with old traditions that had already prior existed in Europe. And Europe, on All Saints Day, especially during the Middle Ages and the 1500s and 1400s, it was very common that All Saints Day, they, the church or church officials would give out soul cakes to the families as a gift on that day to eat. It was like a religious little bread or something like that. And it's like if you celebrate uh, 
Day of the Dead in Mexico, I believe they also have a kind of a sweet bread that they make on that day as well. That's uh, specific to that tradition. You also had neighbors that would go around back in the old days and they were not afraid to go around and ask for food, ask for money, like pennies or something like that. Or if you didn't, they would pray a they would play a prank on you. If they basically said, either give me a treat or I'm going to play a trick or a prank on you. So the concept of trick or treating comes about as a old continue as a continuation of these old ways, except now people are giving the children treats by having the children dress up just like they did. The Irish brought the costume tradition over to the Americas. So now children are starting to dress up on this day as whatever they can. And when they go around to houses, they go around asking for treats or something like that. And people start kind of realizing, well, we can pitch in here because we can kind of become more friendly with other members of the community by helping just kind of give treats out to people. And of course, some kids threatened that if they didn't get a treat, they were going to trick the adults or play a prank on them. So the trick or treat was like a compromise. You give them a treat, maybe they won't go ahead and do something to your house. <laughs> Which back in those days, I don't think they had paintballs. So back in those days, they might do something very bad to your house. <laughs> now, with the successful conversion of Halloween into a commercial community holiday... Parties didn't really be, was kind of the last big tradition to develop, and Halloween parties really didn't start coming on with great frequency until the 1920s. It wasn't until then that Halloween had finally grown to the popularity enough and grown to enough of commercial success that people were willing to have a big party on that day to celebrate it. Of course, today. You have all kinds of costumes, but back then you had like your classic monsters. You would have Dracula, uh, mummies, witches, witches on brooms, I should say, Frankenstein, werewolf, stuff like that, alien. Now, Halloween is the second, today it is the second largest commercial holiday in the United States. Only Christmas is larger in terms of commercial uh, spending. And approximately Halloween... At, you want, you really want to know how much America we Americans spend on Halloween a year? I'm going to give you an estimate here. Supposedly, Americans in one year, any given year, Americans typically will spend about six billion dollars on Halloween, on celebrating the holiday, be it in candy, be it decorations, be it costumes, pumpkins, whatever. They will spend approximately the con. The citizens of the United States will spend approximately $6 billion a year just on Halloween-related festivities. Now, I also wanted to include some uh, fun facts here before we kind of ended the video. Uh, for example, the leaving food out on the porch at night was started out as it was believed that if you did this, it would appease ghosts. The ghost would hopefully take the candy or the treat or whatever you'd left out there, and they would leave you alone. They wouldn't come into the house and disturb you. Yes, he will come to your house unless you give him candy. It's so frightening. You are not frightening. You aren't. Other ghosts can be. Um, black cats. Black cats, as we all have probably learned throughout like kindergarten or so, we probably heard like, oh, you don't want to see a black cat. Black cats are bad luck. Well, black cats being bad luck is an originated tradition. It comes from the Middle Ages, particularly in Europe, as it was believed that witches would often turn themselves into black cats in order to avoid detection. So it was believed that if you saw a black cat, you were not seeing a cat, you were seeing a dis witch in disguise. And of course, witches were like devil worshippers, and they were evil, and they might pass a spell on you. So people didn't want to get anywhere near them, and they thought that, oh my goodness, there's a witch. Where? Where's the witch? Right there. Don't you see that black cat? Don't you see it? You're crazy. But anyway, that's what people believed back then. And that's where the tradition of black cats are spooky or their bad luck come from, come from was that people believed that they were basically witches in disguise, where now... It can sometimes turn into just the opposite because, I mean, my goodness, look at the Hocus Pocus film. The witches d were not cats themselves, but they turned a regular human being into a cat. They turned Thackeray Banks into a cat, and he was black. 
but he was a good cat. Um, let's see here, another fun fact. Uh, costumes. They, as we mentioned, they were first used by the ancient Celts. Now, why were costumes even we come along to Halloween? Well, they were come along to about something. Uh, it was related to spirits, just like these guys were. Ugh. Just like these guys were related to the spirit problem. Costumes came about by the ancient Celts. They were the first Celts to the ancient Celts were the first ones to use costumes on a Halloween holiday, and they used it because they believed that if they were dressed up as something other than themselves, if they look like something else, as a costume is meant to do, is to disguise you, that the ghost would not be able to tell who you were, and that the ghost would think that you were another spirit. They would leave you alone. So it was basically a way to hide from the spirits. You could move about, move about freely, and the spirits would not be able to tell who you were, because, oh, your, your costume's just so good, I can't tell who you are. Now, nowadays, that's very effective. You can very much get a good costume, and people might not be able to know who you are. But back in those days, I don't know how they would have done that. Oh, here's a very fun fact with candy. I know that every one of us, even if you're not a kid anymore, you probably eat some candy on Halloween. It don't matter if you're trick or, if you're young enough to go trick-or-treating anymore or if you're 80 years old. You probably eat candy just a little bit. You eat at least one piece of candy. I guarantee someone in your family will eat one piece of candy at least on Halloween. Well, do you really want to know how much candy we buy? It is. It has actually been reported by... It has been reported by the candy companies in our nation here in the United States, like Hershey's, that on mo one quarter of all the candy sell sales that occur in the United States in one year, of all the candy sold in one year in the United States, one quarter of all that sold, 25% of all the candy that we that gets sold in this country in one year gets bought for Halloween. So one quarter of all our candy is just for Halloween in this nation. <laughs> that just shows you how obsessed people are with their candy on Halloween. And finally, as we we mentioned, the jack-o'-lanterns were originally carved in, into turnips, and they were to scare off evil spirits. So that is basically the gist of the backstory, a little bit of Halloween. I understand there may be some detail I didn't quite clarify, and if I didn't, feel free to put a question in the comment section, and I'll definitely try to answer it. So if you have any questions, don't be afraid to put them in there. So I just wanted to go ahead today and get a video out that kind of just explains why do we even celebrate Halloween, and just how old it is, and where we kind of got these traditions from. It's very it's very much probably one of the more ancient holidays that we kind of celebrate in a way, even more ancient than Christmas. So it's kind of unique that it's lasted this long in some form or another, so it's definitely kind of a miracle. So that basically wraps it up for this video. I don't know what we're going to do on our next one yet, so if you got any ideas, get them to me. If not, we'll find one out anyway. Um... Try and think there's anything else. Other than that, I don't think there's much else. If you like the videos, if you like this, be sure to subscribe. So, yeah, I think that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and cut it off about right here. So hopefully everyone has a wonderful weekend. They have a, and hopefully everyone that watches this or anybody that doesn't have a happy Halloween. It is probably my one of my top five favorite holidays, so I'm definitely going to be happy. <laughs> so, have a happy Halloween, have a good weekend, and may God bless you all through the spooky holiday.